Lord Boros, the Dominator of the Universe. The first villain to survive a punch from Saitama. Someone who served as a benchmark of power in One Punch Man for many years. Most people would generally agree that Boros is definitely in the series' upper echelon of power, but where he scales exactly is quite the hot topic, with some asking if he could beat Cosmic Garo, and others saying he would lose to Orochi. Many videos have been made on Boros and how strong he is, but today I want to examine this behemoth of a character myself and give you my personal take on his strength. And right off the bat, I'll say I do view Boros in high regard, and this video will be kind of generous with his scaling, but I will do my best to back up everything I say, and again, my take is just one of many, I don't intend to attack anyone, this is just my opinion on a series I like. To start off, I want to go over some general lore of Boros, then we'll move on to his battle with Saitama, and as we go through the battle, I'll be making comparisons to Saitama's fight with Garo, as it is very relevant and the matchup between the two is highly debated. Then we'll go through some calcs and some more scaling. But without any further introductions, let's just get right to the video. When Boros first appears, he immediately has a certain aura around him. Like he's somehow different from everyone Saitama and the gang have encountered thus far in the story. He is able to recognize Saitama's power right off the bat, and both he and the caped Baldi have the same narrative of being so absurdly strong that they start losing themselves because of it, and feel nothing but boredom. When the One Punch Man punches him, Boros is able to shrug it off and simply powers up. He is the first monster to ever survive a punch. Boros fights Saitama and, during the fight, Saitama calls him strong twice, and then he goes on to call Boros strong again, even after the fight is over. The One Punch Man himself punches him numerous times, and Boros just refuses to die, to the point that Saitama reveals his ultimate trump card, the Serious Punch which is stated in one of the data books to be an entirely different dimension of power compared to his normal punches. The author of the series, One, when asked about who would win in a fight between Boros and Awakened Garo, said that a battle between the two would be a good match. Granted, this was years ago, and Garo hadn't even monsterized in the manga yet, but it shows the intent of the author and the overall caliber of fighter that Boros was supposed to be at. This also shows that one himself is relatively aware of how intrigued the fanbase is with Boros vs Garo. Keep that in mind as we move forward. Now let's analyze the actual fight Boros has with Saitama. Right off the bat, the alien is able to take a punch from Saitama, and he does this in his weakest state, as the armor is explicitly stated to be nerfing him. This feat is quite debatable though, as Saitama's punches don't actually have a set level of power. For example, he hits human Garo on several occasions and never kills him, despite clearly being able to. He also punches Snack and doesn't kill him, Snack being the guy who got absolutely obliterated by Deep Seeking, who Saitama one-shot with no difficulty. Garo could also take Saitama's consecutive normal punches without sustaining too much damage, and then right after that, Saitama one-shots him with a normal punch. However, a lot of the time with monsters, it's outright stated when Saitama is holding back, like with Rover, and Saitama does imply there is a normal beating, so a baseline normal level of strength he uses to kill monsters does likely exist. Not to say that all of Saitama's normal punches are equal in power or anything like that, just that there's likely a set minimum level of power for a, what a normal punch would be. If that is the case, then there's absolutely no reason why Saitama wouldn't use a baseline normal punch on Boros here, as he punches him absentmindedly and thinks he'll go down just like any other monster. He's actually even a little bit surprised when Boros stands back up. If you believe Boros tanked an actual normal punch here, that would already put armored Boros above monsters like Carnage Kabuto and Orochi, at least when it comes to durability. 
Carnage Kabuto being particularly interesting as he was able to push Darkshine to his limit in a simulation in one of the audiobooks, and in the same audiobook Saitama also one-shot Darkshine in that same simulation. So just from this, Armored Boros is already above most of the verse in durability, seeing as Darkshine and Orochi are some of the higher tier characters. If I had to find a good comparison for this punch, I'd say the punch Saitama threw against Monster Garo at the start of their confrontation is probably somewhat comparable. Although even then Saitama didn't view Garo as a monster and actually wanted nothing to do with him before he got charged at. Meanwhile Boros was actively threatening humanity. So Saitama's punch might have been higher effort against Boros, but it's really unclear and I wouldn't put too much money into this bag. Saitama also punches Garo a bit later when he's annoyed, but again he did not view Garo as a monster, and he actually says he still wants to say something to him right before this, so it's obvious there's no killing intent behind it and he's just someone annoyed. That's not to say Armored Boros definitively has better durability than Perfected Fist Garo. Like I said before, Saitama's punches can vary in strength, but it is something to keep in mind. The go-to argument against everything I've said so far would be that Saitama grows massively stronger every single day, and Boros wouldn't scale to later versions of Saitama. This comes from the VGS audiobook I mentioned earlier. Don't worry, I will get to all of that later. The manga then cuts away from the battle, and when it returns, we see Boros has lost an arm. In the anime, this gap is filled with a sequence of the two clashing repeatedly until Saitama punches the arm off, indicating that he's now using a higher level of power than before when he punched a weaker Boros and didn't really do much damage. This is also where Saitama calls Boros strong for the first time. This is important because Saitama usually can't tell how strong an opponent is. After the Baldi defeats Goketsu, Suryu asks him if the monster was strong, to which Saitama answers, I don't know, it only took one punch. In some other translations, it's even more blatant. I'm not sure how to compare it with the others. They all went down with one punch. Another example of this happened in the recent chapter where Genos tried to fight Saitama, and then asked him if he's gotten stronger, but Saitama just couldn't tell. So, for Saitama to say Boros is strong, he'd have to actually feel something against him. Whether it be the power of Boros' blows, or the fact that he's able to take punches without dying, something is clearly impressing Saitama here, the way regular monsters just don't do. This puts Boros above Carnage Kabuto once again, and by extension above Darkshine, it may also put him above monsters like Orochi and above current Genos, if you believe that he would scale to later versions of Saitama. After this, the two go on to clash with each other Dragon Ball Z style and are clearly portrayed as being relative in speed, with Boros then actually outspeeding Saitama and getting a direct hit in. He is also doing this with only one arm while Saitama has two. This isn't to say released Boros is as fast as full power Saitama, that's just blatantly not the case, but he is just as fast, if not faster, than this relatively casual Saitama. This can be compared to how Garo did against Saitama at the start of their battle, where Garo also managed to outspeed Saitama at one point, but I would argue that Boros' speed is considerably more impressive, as Saitama wasn't even remotely trying at all against Garo, not in the slightest. He was teasing him all throughout their fight and asking him what his problem was. He didn't even know why Garo was attacking him and was actually convinced Garo was just some dude doing a monster cosplay at some point. Garo also punches Saitama dead in the face and Saitama just no-sells it. And Garo even shatters his arm at one point while attacking Saitama. Compare this to Boros, who is able to send a more serious Saitama flying with a punch. And I'm saying Saitama is more serious here because he actually does consider his Boros to be a monster and a threat to mankind, not just some dude in a monster costume who Saitama actively wants to keep alive to talk to him later. And again, Saitama did call Boros strong already, so it's pretty clear that he would be taking him more seriously than he's taking Garo at this point in their battle. Boros then jumps at Saitama with a kick and Saitama actually jumps out of the way. 
Now this is definitely reaching a bit, but Saitama normally does not dodge attacks. The only other time he dodges is against Garo while mocking and teasing him. He does all sorts of wacky poses and even has a literal troll face at more than one occasion. Whereas he's being more serious against Boros. Not to say he's going full force, just that he isn't toying around and is actually in battle mode so to speak. So for him to not take an attack head on and dodge it, maybe that means something, maybe it doesn't. I'll show more moments like this later on as we go on. After this, Boros chases after Saitama and they clash further. Saitama is once again able to keep up, indicating that he may have unleashed a little more of his speed than before, seeing as now he's not getting punched away. Once the two emerge on the surface, Boros starts charging up a blast and he states that if it hits Saitama, not even his bones will remain. This is important because Saitama has tanked punches from Boros at this point without much issue. So Boros being confident that this blast can one-shot him should mean his energy attacks are way above his physical punches and possibly even a one-shot level higher. Saitama then takes the blast head on and Boros comes up behind him and slams a fist into the back of his head. Saitama clearly reacts to the blow, his eyes go wide and his expression becomes rather serious. In the cover for the next chapter, it actually says Saitama took damage. Now, this is controversial, but let me explain why this is actually true. In the original Japanese Raws, it is right there. Right on the panel. One himself oversees the manga, so he would have to have had approved of this statement. And now, I know what you're saying, this is not in the official Viz version of the manga. But Viz actually removes text from chapter covers all the time, for all the chapters, not just this one specifically. The statement is right there in the Japanese release. A common counter-argument to this would be that if Saitama was truly damaged, then why didn't he jump from joy? He should have a reaction. But this is where another example of Saitama being damaged comes into play. Saitama told Tario that he would not get scratched in his fight against Garo. Then when he gets hit by Garo's consecutive normal punches, he says, Aw oh man, I told that kid I wouldn't get a scratch. He also has a mark under his nose, which he appears to be wiping blood from. The translation varies a bit, but it's always the same idea. Saitama said he wouldn't get scratched, and then he got scratched and arguably even bled a little. He's not talking about his clothes because he already talked about them earlier on in the fight, so the only logical conclusion is that he took a bit of damage. And how did he react? He just got a little annoyed. He didn't jump from joy or anything. Quite frankly, just scratching him is not enough to satisfy him or make him excited. That's the most consistent interpretation. Now, I'm not saying released Boros is exactly as strong as Cosmic Garo or anything like that, just that they can both reach that tier of power where they can actually do something to relatively casual Saitama. This would put both of them far above the likes of monsters like Orochi and Perfected Fist Garo, who could do nothing to casual Saitama. Back to Boros, some people have also tried to argue that it's a mistranslation somehow, but it's pretty blatantly not. I myself translated it and it literally says unexpected damage, so it's definitely consistent. On top of that, it's not just the cover statement that indicates Boros actually did something to Saitama. It depends on the translation a bit, but right after landing this attack that supposedly damaged Saitama, Boros also says, that one definitely connected. He's already hit Saitama several times, but this one, this one blow, this definitely connected. There is an emphasis being put on this moment. Boros has likely powered up and actually done a tiny bit of damage. He also says Saitama's wounds will continue to increase as he fights. For Boros to make such a statement, there would have to be some physical damage visible on Saitama, not just dirt. There's also a very obvious comparison with Garo to be made here. Boros punches him in the head, Saitama takes a bit of damage. Garo punches him in the head, Saitama no-sells it, says Garo can scratch him and slaps him away. 
And to even further hammer in that Boros does scale to Saitama. In a data book, it's literally stated that he has rivaling abilities to him. Rivaling abilities. Enough said. Another thing to note here is that in one of the panels, Boros is actually shown to be bleeding from his mouth, indicating that he had to have taken another attack from Saitama, this time to the face. So, yeah, that's pretty impressive. However, I will say this mark doesn't appear on many of the other panels in that same section of the fight, so it might just be an inconsistency, but it also might indicate that he did take another attack to the face and came out of it relatively unscathed. After Boros scratches Saitama, he starts monologuing about how he has instant regeneration and how he will wear him down over time, but Saitama tells him to shut up. I feel like people will point to this moment and try to say that this debunks all I've said here about Boros damaging Saitama, but it really doesn't. A scratch is, at the end of the day, a scratch. Saitama knows he can easily one-shot Boros at any time he wants, whether it be with a serious punch or with a strong normal punch, or with consecutive normal punches, it doesn't matter. He can end the fight whenever. Scratches aren't going to bring him down. That's why he's upset and doesn't want to listen to Boros' monologues. Because what he's saying doesn't matter. Saitama still won't get a satisfying battle. Hearing this, Boros resorts to unleashing his ultimate trump card, Meteoric Burst. With it, he proceeds to actually blitz this casual Saitama and surprise him with his speed. And the panels here are directly paralleling what Cosmic Garo did to Saitama when he first appeared. Remember how I said that Juan and Murata are likely aware of Boros vs. Garo being a hot topic in the community? These panels, paralleling each other to the point that you can make side-by-side -side comparisons, cannot be a coincidence. There's just no way. Saitama's expressions are similar, Garo and Boros are in the same pose, both achieve this feat right after unleashing a new form. The comparison is clear as day. I view it as sort of like a nod to attentive readers. Like, hey, remember that thing Boros did? Garo can do it too now. Taking all that into account, I do believe Boros is being portrayed as relative to this initial version of Cosmic Garo in speed. And again, I have to stress this. The initial version. Not any of the later ones. Just this initial, starting, baseline Cosmic Garo. Following this, Boros blows Saitama away with a punch, and what's interesting here is that Boros punches the Baldi all the way off panel, charges at him and closes the distance between them all before Saitama could even react here. If you zoom in, you can see his chin is still up. He's still reacting to the blow. Again, this does not mean Boros is faster than full power Saitama. Just that he is now massively faster than the level of speed Saitama was using to fight released Boros, showing how massive the gap between released and meteoric burst is, at least in speed. In the manga, Boros kicks Saitama to the moon right after this, however, in the anime he performs a whole combo on him, and in the anime you can actually see debris coming off from Saitama that looks suspiciously like blood. Like seriously, there's nothing else it could be. And the One Punch Man compass also states, Saitama is sort of clobbered. Clobbered means hit hard, so this sort of implies that blows from Meteoric Burst Boros are considered at least a little hard to Saitama. Again, this is Saitama in his normal mode, not serious. I'm not trying to say Boros scales above Saitama's max durability or anything, but that he can damage normal Saitama a bit. Then again, I don't really know how Saitama would increase the durability of his skin. This isn't really Dragon Ball or Naruto where characters have chakra or key defenses. Saitama doesn't really have any of that. Maybe he could tense up his muscles or something, but again, I just don't think it would be consistent for Boros to be above full power Saitama's durability or anything. It's likely just that he's above this casual Saitama. After this, the moon kick happens, and then the infamous this is almost a real fight line occurs. 
And I really don't know what to say here, it just happens. Blatantly. Saitama acknowledges that Boros is almost giving him a fight. Once again, Saitama can't normally compare monsters to each other because of how far beneath him they are. But that's not the case here. Saitama blatantly says that this is almost a real fight. It's obviously not quite there because he still has his serious modes and so on, but he's consistently getting scratched and impressed by Boros. For Saitama to be able to tell this is almost a real fight, he would have to be feeling something against Boros. I can't stress this enough. After this, Saitama returns to Earth, Boros says this man makes him want to go all out, which I guess could be indicating that he wasn't going at full power before, but more likely he's just referring to the collapsing Star Roaring Cannon. Boros then proceeds to unleash a barrage of attacks on Saitama, and instead of getting blown back like before, Saitama stands his ground, indicating that he's likely using even more power now. But a detail which I think is pretty interesting is that when Boros unleashes this barrage, Saitama actually raises his arms to block. This has only happened a few times in the series. As far as I can remember at least. Once against released Boros, which is somewhat consistent given that released Boros can scratch casual Saitama. Once when Orochi fired a beam at him, but this is before the redraw and you could make the argument that Saitama might just be shielding his eyes from the light emanating from the beam, as he's not really even blocking the attack itself. There are clear gaps between his arms, so the beam is hitting his face head on and doing nothing. And <laughs> funny enough, this script was written before the last chapter, and in this chapter something very similar happens, so... I guess yay for me. And then the last time Saitama blocks is when Garo hits him with a Gamma Ray Burst, in which you actually see him crossing his arms to prevent the attack from hitting his face head on. All this even further backs up the claim that Boros was actually damaging Saitama very slightly, Think of a boxing match and the difference between getting hit right in the nose and blocking the hit with your arm. It's sort of like that. Saitama wasn't defending from earlier blows and they actually did a little bit of damage. Now he's standing his ground and firmly blocking. Saitama then punches Boros and sends him flying, but the alien is able to catch himself, stay on his feet and laugh. And an interesting detail here is that Boros actually bleeds from his mouth, whereas before when Saitama punches him in his weakest form, he doesn't bleed at all. This just further shows that there are levels to Saitama's normal punches, and that this one was way way stronger than the first one. After this, Saitama performs consecutive normal punches and turns Boros to mush. People compare this to how Garo did against this same move, to say Garo has way better durability, However, as I already established numerous times, Saitama wasn't even remotely trying here. He promised Ario not to kill Garo, he's teasing and trolling Garo all throughout their fight, he starts using only one hand against him at one point just to mess with him, he keeps asking Garo if he's done, and right after Garo takes the consecutive normal punches, Saitama one-shots him with just a normal punch. That one normal punch was stronger than all the consecutive punches. The only possible counter to this is that when Garo uses consecutive normal punches for the first time, he's able to scratch Saitama, and he's only seen the consecutive normal punches used on him when he was a monster, so he'd presumably be using the same amount of strength here as Saitama did when he hit him. But this is pretty questionable seeing as Monster Garo was never recognized as strong by Saitama, none of his attacks ever did anything to Saitama besides annoy him a little bit, and even his strongest blows did absolutely zero damage. It would be very inconsistent to say that the punches Garo dished out here are only as powerful as the ones Monster Garo took. A more consistent line of scaling is that Cosmic Garo was simply already way stronger than the consecutive normal punches performed on Monster Garo even before copying Saitama. This is supported by a few things. Firstly, Garo is confident that he can now beat Saitama even before copying him, despite his monster self getting one shot moments prior, indicating that this Garo is already a one shot level increase stronger than he was before. 
And as we already established, the singular punch Saitama used to one-shot Monster Garo was stronger than the consecutive punches used against Monster Garo. It's simply more likely that Garo was just using a way stronger version of the consecutive punches than the one Saitama hit him with earlier. All this to say, the consecutive normal punches used against Monster Garo do not scale to Saitama's durability, nor do they scale to consecutive normal punches performed against Boros. Getting back to the fight, Boros regenerates from the consecutive normal punches and unleashes his ultimate move, the collapsing Star Roaring Cannon. I shall talk about its power in another section of the video, as the exact power of this attack is more so important for scaling Boros to other verses, not his own. But the reaction Saitama has to this attack is rather similar to how he reacts to Garo's Gamma Ray Burst later on. Saitama then goes on to deflect the cannon with a serious punch. An interesting detail here is that you could actually argue that Saitama needed the serious punch to deflect the cannon, and that a normal punch wouldn't have been enough. As in the One Punch Man Compass, it is said that Saitama resorts to the serious punch here. Resort means turn to and adopt a course of action so as to resolve a difficult situation. So this situation may be considered difficult for Saitama, and he had to resort to the serious punch as nothing less would have sufficed. And this might actually be consistent if you take the guidebook statement about serious Saitama being in a whole other dimension of power compared to normal Saitama, as the cannon has actually been calc to be around 19% as strong as the serious punch. 19% of something that is apparently a whole league above a normal punch is pretty impressive to say the least. Regardless of that, Boros uses energy to regenerate, and he used it all for this roaring cannon. So he has none of it left to spare for a generation when he is about to die. So if Boros hadn't spent all his energy for the roar cannon, he could have survived. Saitama then calls Boros strong again, and this is where a lot of the Boros downplay comes from. Boros says Saitama had strength to spare, and that he barely even phased him. And honestly, I don't know why people claim this confirms Boros never did anything to Saitama. Like, yeah, of course Saitama had strength to spare. This wasn't a real fight. It was almost a real fight. Boros being able to scratch Saitama doesn't make him a challenging opponent. Saitama didn't need to go all out, even his serious punches have levels to them. But Boros did impress him and did damage him a little bit. None of what Boros said here debunks that at all. After this, Saitama goes on to call Boros strong one final time before the Boros saga closes. Now, I wish I could end the video here, but we have plenty of things to discuss still. For one, after the Super Fight Tournament, Saitama says that he hasn't felt anything in a long time. There aren't any opponents he can call rivals, and all sorts of stuff like that. And for one, even if that is true, it doesn't really debunk anything. Getting scratched just does not count as a satisfying thing in his head like I've already said before. But also, Saitama is extremely depressed here, even more than usual. He went into the martial arts tournament and came out empty-handed. He's in a very bad mood and sort of begins saying things that are just blatantly not true. Like how he no longer feels joy or anger and that his emotions are slipping away, only to immediately get pissed off and emotional after King talks some smack. He says he can't get any stronger, only to get exponentially stronger than he was before during the Garo fight. You can sort of compare him to yourself in all likelihood. Like, think about it, how many times have you fell down after a bad day? and said there's nothing good in your life and things along those lines, only to later experience something joyful, or even just remember a past event that caused you to feel joy. Personally, it's happened to me a ton over the years. I think it's very likely that Saitama is over-exaggerating, forgetting about Boros, coming to the wrong conclusions, and even if you want to disagree with all that, that's fine. This conversation doesn't debunk anything regardless, because though Boros came rather close, he still was not a satisfying opponent. 
Actually, now I have to edit the script once more because of the new chapter that's come out, where Saitama once again confirms that he barely remembers any of the monsters he's killed. For one, I barely remember any monsters does not mean I don't remember any monsters. He could still remember Boros to some degree. But again, this doesn't really debunk anything like I already said. Getting scratches just doesn't count as a satisfying battle for Saitama. Another thing I'll mention about the new chapter is that when Genos unleashes his new power, the panel of him powering up does look similar to released Boros' first appearance. And when Genos charges at Saitama, the panels do sort of look similar to how Garo and Boros blitzed over to Saitama. But this time, I don't really think it makes Genos as strong as those two for a couple reasons. Mainly because this just clearly does not have the same energy as the previous two times it happened. Instead of being surprised, Saitama just makes a funny face. It's clearly not meant to be serious. But I'll wait until we get more feats for current Genos to talk about how strong he might be. For all we know, he might actually be, like, supremely strong and stuff like that, but again, I'll wait to talk about him until we have more information. Now for another common counter-argument, the audiobook Genos Training. For those of you who are not aware, Dr. Griseno creates a device called the VGS, which basically creates a virtual reality where heroes fight monsters. Saitama uses it, and his fighting power data gets uploaded into the machine. Then the next day, Saitama one-shots that data, and says, why would I lose to yesterday's me? People use this to say Saitama gets a one-shot level increase stronger every single day. However, I do disagree. For one, Saitama himself thinks it's unreliable data. Another thing people always forget to mention is that the machine was actually improved in the time span between the first and second time Saitama used it. This is important because it's pretty heavily implied that the first version of the machine can't really handle Saitama's power, as it breaks when the data clone one-shots Darkshine in a simulation. Then the machine was improved, it's directly stated, so its capacity might be higher than before, the clone from yesterday could just be all the power the machine could handle at that time, and now it's able to handle a lot more, so the current Saitama is registered as way stronger. However, I will say that it's never specifically stated what aspects of the machine were improved, and Genos does seem kind of convinced that Saitama may have grown stronger, but then it's also unclear if he would know the machine's capacity increased if that was the case, because we don't know if he upgraded the VGS himself, or if he just had Dr. Kuseno do it for him. And also, Genos does say in the beginning of the audiobook that it was naive of him to think that he could figure out Saitama's power with mere simulations too. So, overall, there's just this clear narrative being painted that the VGS is unreliable, there are multiple explanations that could explain why Saitama could one-shot himself from yesterday without going into the whole he one-shots himself from yesterday, therefore he has to keep getting a one-shot level increase stronger thing. It's a pretty complicated topic. Another thing to bring up is that Saitama's growth is largely contributed to his emotions, at least in the Garo battle, as it specifically stated that his power grew to a surge of emotions, and it's also worth noting that even in the middle of a battle with an opponent almost as strong as himself, Saitama's growth curve almost looks like a straight line at first. Like he's barely improving, if at all. So if his rate of growth in a battle before he gets that sudden emotional outburst is basically close to zero, then during regular training I find it hard to believe that he would be getting a one-shot multiplier every single day. The narrative also disagrees pretty hard, as while well, Saitama has been confirmed to keep training even after breaking his limiter, and the narrator's statements during the Garo battle do imply that there is some rate of growth before the Cosmic Garo battle, Boros and Garo have been considered rivals for a long time, the authors go out of their way to show relativity between them, and it's just pretty clear that Boros was never meant to be crept out like that. Even if Saitama has gotten stronger since the Boros fight, it shouldn't be by a very significant margin. Plus, in another audiobook, Saitama encounters Tatsumaki, and she cannot do a thing to him. 
This is Saitama with hair too, so he'd be weaker than the Saitama that faced Boros. And as we've already established, Boros did deal damage to casual Saitama during their battle. So released Boros is above Tatsumaki in AP and durability, which would put him above most of the cast still. The whole Boros getting power corrupt thing is just very inconsistent in my opinion. Lastly, I want to touch up on the author's statement about Boros vs Awakened Garo. Things have obviously changed a ton since that statement was made, but I will say that the only times Garo is referred to as Awakened Garo in the manga is when he's in cosmic fear mode. At no other time is he called Awakened Garo specifically. Now let's get to some Calx and Crossverse power scaling. I'll keep this section as brief as I possibly can, as I am not very interested in Crossverse scaling, but to quickly sum up, Release Boros has consistent planet level scaling, going off of him being comfortably above Monster Garo in power, as he is able to damage Saitama and Garo is not. Garo has calcs that put him at planet level, Sage Centipede and Orochi also have small planetary scaling, and Boros very easily scales above them. Even going off of just raw calculations for Boros specifically and not scaling him off of any other characters, Saitama's moon jump has been calculated to be multi-continental to moon level, and Boros's ship tanked it with minimal damage. Boros's own attacks do way more damage to the ship than that, and Saitama was also able to tear apart massive parts of the ship when he was being very casual. The same casual Saitama couldn't one-shot armored Boros, so armored Boros's durability is already in those multi-continental to moon level ranges at least, and his other forms would upscale from that by a lot, obviously. Boros is also stated to be able to blow away entire planets with his latent energy in the One Punch Man compass, latent energy most likely referring to released Boros, seeing as Meteoric Burst is a level beyond the natural limits of his energy. This is consistent too, because released Boros can somewhat scratch Saitama, who wasn't at all damaged by Garo's planet level attacks. In Meteoric Burst, Boros' stats obviously skyrocket, there are some calcs that put him at large planet level with just his bare hands, and he's implied to be massively above released Boros, who already has planet level scaling, and the collapsing star roaring cannon. I will, I'm just gonna say it, it's a confirmed star buster. So Meteoric Burst Boros' strength, being between released Boros and the collapsing star roaring cannon, is rather consistent. I know people's first reaction is going to be that the scan is mistranslated or inconsistent, and I used to be on this side too, but these arguments can be debunked. However, this video is already long enough, and a YouTuber named Christian Kember has already done an excellent video on the topic, where he goes into detail about the star cannon, so if you're interested, I suggest you check it out. The guy deserves way more views and subscribers than he currently has. In fact, a sizable portion of the information used in this video came from him, so definitely check it out. For speed, Boros consistently scales to initial Cosmogaro lore-wise, who has many calcs, but I won't be going into that. Even lower end scaling for him, with just raw lowball calculations, already places Meteoric Burst Boros at thousands of times faster than light, Scaling Boros off of the moon kick and saying he's only like relativistic speed because of it is just blatantly false. Cause th that would literally make him as fast as one of his minions, which got absolutely bullied by Saitama and couldn't impress him with his speed at all, meanwhile Boros impressed Saitama with his speed a couple times. Not to mention Awakened Cockroach and early series Genos scaled to relativistic speed, so... You know, if, if you believe Meteoric Burst Boros is as, so, as fast as a wicked cockroach, I mean, I don't know, be my guest, I guess. Overall, Boros is definitely a force to be reckoned with. He's the first to survive punches from and damage Saitama. Released Boros should consistently be a good deal above Monster Garo in attack potency, with their speed probably being a bit more debatable. But Saitama did seem a lot more serious against Boros than he was against Garo, and he was keeping up with both of them just fine for the most part, so I would give the edge to Boros. However, the speed and power gap aren't quite enough to overwhelm Garo here, especially given his massively superior combat skill, 
So in an actual fight, I do believe Garo would be able to adapt quickly enough to catch up to Boros and then outpace him with martial arts and eventually force him into Meteoric Burst. With Meteoric Burst, Boros should at least be a one-shot level increase above Monster Garo, and he's fast enough to blitz him. Meteoric Burst is a very training move, so Boros wouldn't play around. He says it himself, it is a move he only uses to win battles quickly, so Boros would, in all likelihood, speed blitz and one-shot Monster Garo. Cosmic Garo would be interesting at first, but while they would be relative in speed and strength, Garo's massively superior skill set, combat ability, and martial arts would definitely give him the victory 100% of the time, and I won't pretend otherwise. Meteoric Burst is very draining, so Boros couldn't fight for very long. If he pulls out the Roar Cannon, he might be able to one-shot Garo with it, because the Gamma Ray Burst is calculated to be at large planet level consistently, whereas the Cannon is a star-busting move. But Garo could easily just copy the Roar Cannon and cancel it out with a cannon of his own. It would also make sense narratively for Garo's Gamma Ray Burst to be star level or greater, considering what happens later on in his fight with Saitama. And it is also somewhat implied that the Gamma Ray Burst Garo uses is on the level of an actual Gamma Ray Burst. So yeah, I do believe Garo could match or maybe overpower the Roar Cannon with the Gamma Ray Burst if need be. He could also teleport the cannon away if we use post-Blast fight Garo. Blast is another character that's interesting to compare to Boros, but he does have better feats, as he can react to Garo and Saitama serious punches, and briefly contain and teleport the force of their clash, even without help from his teammates. So Boros would likely end up being teleported into another dimension and being trapped there. In conclusion, in my opinion, Boros definitely still retains his title as one of the strongest beings in the One Punch Man verse, only losing to Saitama, God, Garo, and Blast. But what do you think? I'd be interested to hear what you think of Boros, and if you think any differently now than you did before watching this video. And if you made it all the way to the end, I thank you greatly, and wish you an excellent rest of your day. Goodbye.